Hello everyone and welcome back to The Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and today I want to talk about the future, mainly because I just can't stop thinking about this. So Total War Warhammer 3 has a bunch of unique maps and that's usually for very important capitals and so on, yet there is one specific city with a unique map known as Null. Now, most people wouldn't think too much about this, but there is a massive DLC potential here for the very future, and I think that this map was left there just to have a bit of a hint. So why is Null so important for Warhammer Fantasy? Well, it's one of the main plot points for perhaps, well, not even perhaps, it is the best Warhammer Fantasy supplement we ever had. This is Tamokan, the Throne of Chaos, which is pretty much one of the very rare few times that Games Workshop really knocked it out of the park. I'm talking an engaging story, perhaps one of the best for Warhammer Fantasy, incredible miniatures that introduce a lot of new cool stuff, and not only that, but loads of new characters that people just really, really liked. If you talk to many Warhammer Fantasy fans who played around the time of 8th edition, and you ask them what was their favourite supplement, a lot of people will go to Tamokan purely because it added stuff for the Empire, it added stuff for Chaos, and it added the Chaos Dwarves once again, it brought them back into a new form of army. Horrendously overpowered as they were, but then again, you know, Forge World. Now the book itself is amazing, but also kind of sad in a sense, because it was supposed to gear up for a big four-part story, and unfortunately we never really got the rest. The end times came into effect, but prior to that, the series was cancelled for one reason or another, which baffles me because it was so good. Yeah, it was probably too expensive for most people because Forge World, but that's a Games Workshop mistake, not the player base not buying. It's literally just Games Workshop being Games Workshop. Now, the premise of the book is rather simple. Tamil Khan, one of the sons of the Great Kurgan, wishes to lay waste to the Warhammer Fantasy world. Surprise, surprise, chaos just being chaos. And it takes him around through different areas. He goes into the Darklands, he fights some Cathayans, he fights a lot of different factions, but the main end goal is to go and destroy the Empire. Interestingly enough, Tamokan doesn't go the traditional sense of going straight into, say for example, Kislev, fighting your way down, but instead, in the most weirdest sense, takes a more stealthy approach by trying to catch the Empire off guard. This is why he goes for the Darklands and the Badlands and all that. But as he travels, he amasses stronger and stronger armies, more or less rivaling that of a proper Chaos Invasion. Many people see this book as perhaps a Storm of Chaos 2.0, but a lot more fleshed out and it makes a lot of sense considering how everything was geared up. His campaign grinds to a halt when he enters the Imperial province of Wissenland, mainly because the resistance there was extremely fierce, as the Warriors of Chaos, Chaos Dwarves and pretty much anything else that joined up with him, laid siege to the Imperial city of Null, which is known for its very devastating black powder weaponry, and its defence led by Elsa von Draken, the Dark Lady of Null, among some other characters and other factions which did take arms to protect the Empire. This also includes some Marienburgers, even some Border Princes too, but the main thing is that if Null would fall, there would be a clear path to Altdorf, and by that point the forces of Chaos would have taken out a very, very strong defensive position. So you can see why this is a really good matchup, because it goes after one of the most popular Warhammer Fantasy books, and obviously having a unique city in Null like you can see on screen, this kind of points to it. In fact, many people have been expecting this matchup for a long, long time now, with many people in the fanbase already giving it a potential name, the Lady and the Maggot. This would add in a really cool character for the Empire, as, well, more wizards are always great, especially a legendary lord with the lore of death and an awesome dragon, you know, because dragons. And a cool character for the Chaos faction, I'm not sure if this would go to the Warriors of Chaos or the Monogod Chaos faction, for Nurgle of course, as, well, he kind of fits everywhere, but we'll jump into the specifics soon. Now, I'm not saying that this DLC would come anytime soon, because I imagine that we'd get Chaos Dwarfs first, then something else, but the character itself is so cool. I love talking about Tamokan because he's one of my favourites, he's just so awesome. Now, there's a few things to talk about before we jump into any specifics. Miniatures were added in, but not a lot of them. It's not enough to justify a DLC, at least in my opinion, and some stuff from the Tamokan book is already in-game. I'm talking about the Plague Toads, 
as those were added in for the Nurgle vanilla roster. So if Creative Assembly are going to do a DLC with this matchup, they'll have to go into some other supplements or even go to stuff that was implemented as artwork but never really as a unit. Now we'll start off with the Chaos stuff because, well let's be honest, the Chaos stuff is generally cooler and it will mostly be Nurgle centric but I imagine that this could then be done in such a way which will benefit other Chaos factions too. So certain units could go to the Warriors of Chaos, certain units could go to the Monogod Chaos faction. This is depending on what happens where Tamokon is actually placed. So we'll start off with Tamokon himself, which is a really interesting character because he's actually a maggot, so you never actually see Tamokon. What you see is the bodies that he possesses, and he's been known to possess, say for example, Chaos Warriors, Ogres, which is the miniature that you can see right now, and just turn them into pure Nurgleite creatures. He's a melee focused character, quite powerful at that, and has his own unique mount known as Bubalos. That is the massive toad dragon that you can see on the screen. The character itself is interesting because on the tabletop he had a unique possession mechanic where if he's defeated, the maggot can attempt to jump out and possess the person who killed him, kind of like a face hugger. Yeah, it's the best way to explain it. This made the character extremely durable because he would just take over the stats of the enemy and just carry on fighting, and that was really, really interesting. I don't know how something like that could work in Total War Warhammer, as they would need to create a lot of Nurgle-styled maybe different models for that, which don't get me wrong is doable but I just don't see it happening because they spent a lot of time on the Demon Prince and people didn't receive that too well. Though I imagine that Temukon would be much more popular than Daniel. Unless they try to do a workaround where they could possess characters but then add in just a basic green filter and they wouldn't be able to possess say for example legendary lords, that makes sense because that means that they'll only be able to possess generic lords if they die. Either way it's a melee character which I know some people aren't too keen on but this is a character which should be up front and center, he should be a duelist, he should be able to do a lot of damage to units and again core cool factor, I mean this is the most important thing when it comes to DLC he's extremely cool. Now let's start looking at possible units for the Chaos roster which should be quite cool if we get a lot of stuff focused on this book. The first is Rot Knights. Now the issue with Rot Knights is they never had a unique model. What you had to do was just get some Chaos Knights, paint them Nurgle colors and put them on a larger base because they would count as monstrous cavalry. They had more or less a similar stat line to Chaos Knights of Nurgle, however they also had fear and regeneration too because they were heavily mutated. Now what they could do is either make something completely unique Unique, which I wouldn't be opposed to because we know that that can happen or they could get the model for Kazik the Befouled and then just change it around to make it a bit more unique and make them generic units which I wouldn't be opposed to I think that would work out quite well I would still like Kazik as a character but I don't know we'll talk about that when we go to a possible FLC section Rot Knights would be really cool because we could have two variants directly in one with hand weapons and shield and the other one with lances and shield which would allow for these Rot Knights to to be able to give us some anti-large, which is desperately needed for the Nurgle faction at the moment. This would be the perfect time to also implement Chaos Warriors of Nurgle, just some foot variants, sword and board, and you know, halberd and shield, which could work in two ways. Either they can just have the recolor, which wouldn't be a DLC unit, but rather come in the accompanying patch, or they could then use the Kazik model to create something unique, which would be the better thing. This is kind of like how the Warriors of Chaos of Corn have the same model as the Skull Crushers. I know a lot of people aren't too keen on reusing assets, but that would be a fantastic thing just to fill out the roster for Nurgle a little bit more and give some units that they desperately need. Next we'd look towards Plague Ogres, which were a Forge World unit. These were absolutely awesome because essentially it's just, well, you know, very heavily mutated Ogres. We didn't really see that a lot when it came to the lore as these types of ogres only appeared in very minor circumstances. But as you can tell from the models, they look absolutely awesome and I think that they would be a great addition to the Nurgle faction because they would be slowish, but they'd be packing a massive punch. They'd be very durable. It fits well with the Nurgle theme. I'm imagining that these would probably just be in the Nurgle roster so they wouldn't go to the Warriors of Chaos. But if Tamakon does end up in the Warriors of Chaos instead of the Nurgle roster, he could have these as a unique unit for his faction and also for the basic monogod nurgle faction i'm trying to find a middle ground here that sounds good for everyone 
Dial Trolls of Chaos are another thing, which I know a lot of people aren't too keen on trolls. There are a lot in the Warhammer universe, that's the thing. There's just that many, but it's again very heavily mutated, much more durable, and they would be pretty cool in terms of look. Functionality-wise on the battlefield, they would have decent movement, they wouldn't be extremely fast, but, you know, maybe a bit slower than normal trolls. They'd be very durable and, you know, regeneration, poison attacks, all that type of stuff that makes Nurgle Nurgle. I think it would be a great unit just to add in some extra flavor and a little bit faster stuff. We have seen Creative Assembly say that Nurgle is lacking on speed at the moment, so this kinda helps. And finally, the Toad Dragon. Now, the Toad Dragon itself is just super cool because it's massive, it looks awesome, it's gonna do a lot of damage. Think of it kind of like the whole Dread Saurian, but Nurgle style, which I think many people would love. I imagine that, like the Dread Saurian, there would be restrictions on how many you could recruit, but I mean, look at it. It's one of the best miniatures that ever got released in the Warhammer Fantasy series, and I would love to have an army of these just smashing about, especially if Tamukan does end up as a theme DLC. These should be heavily destructive and extremely durable, and I'd imagine that this would be quite a fast creature too, so you could move it around, but with a slow army, I don't know how that would work quite well. Though, mind you, this would be the ultimate flanker, that's for sure. So that's pretty much it when it comes to Chaos, and I think Chaos deserves the most attention here if the normal DLC format remains in Warhammer 3. Now, a lot of people would be saying, where's the Chaos Siege Giant? But if we get that, I'm assuming that it's going to go directly to the Chaos Dwarves. It just fits them a lot better. So with that being said, we will now look towards the Empire. And I don't think that they would get as many units, but they could get some interesting stuff, which I imagine is going to be what's going to happen in the Old World. So let's just jump right in. So we'll start off with Elsa von Drac, as she's probably going to be the main character here. Yes, there is an elector count of Wissenland, but she doesn't really take part. So Elsef is an interesting character because she leads the Amethyst College, a very, very proficient spellcaster in the lore of death. And not only that, but she may or may not be a vampire. It's kind of hinted a few times, but they never outright say that she is, despite the fact that she does wither and then get her youth back after a certain amount of time in the story. I don't want to jump into too much of the story itself, as it's just Games Workshop's writing when it comes to this. But she is a spellcaster in the Law of Death, she's got some pretty interesting items. The fact is that she is just another spellcaster which could add in a bit more flavor, because right now for the Empire, we do have a lot of variety, funny enough. It's one of the most varied when it comes to legendary lords. She's also mounted atop a Carmine Dragon, which would be really cool, because, I mean, dragon and, well, you see the model on screen right now, it's just awesome. But the main thing is having access to a character with the lore of death as a legendary lord. It just provides for something completely different. Yes, you'd be very close to that of Balthazar unless he gets moved, but imagine confederating him early and having the power couple there doing as much damage as possible. Going into units, the Marienburg landship is an obvious choice because, well, it was featured in the book and it was part of the main story. However, we have been seeing that Marienburg might have its own unique DLC in the future, so I really much don't think that we're going to get the Marienburg landship. Now, I know a lot of people might be pissed off about hearing that, but hear me out, right? If the Marienburg landship falls under Marienburg itself with its own possible DLC, then this could be done in such a way to just finish off the Empire. Null Ironsides would be brought in as a heavy armored handgunner unit. This is kind of expected because, well, it's a null based DLC, so yeah. And it would bring in more of a punch. Keep in mind that a lot of stuff that I'm going to be referencing for this is very focused on gunpowder due to the Imperial gunnery schools. When it comes to DLC, we normally get a lot of units which are just reskinned from others. You can see that with like the war dancers and all that. But in the case of this DLC, it's not necessarily a bad thing, as this would be a unit which, yeah, would be very basic and it would be heavy armored, so it would last a lot longer. But this isn't a flagship unit. A new unit could be implemented in the form of heavily armored pistoliers. They were referenced in art in the book, but just never had a unit for it which could be interesting because once again focusing heavily on black powder. Don't worry, we're going to get into the unique stuff now, but I wanted to talk about these because while they aren't necessarily needed, I feel like they would be kind of cool. So yeah, these are heavily armored pistoliers, which can charge into battle and do damage, so think of them as their own knights in a sense. Instead of Reichsguard, which have a lance and a shield and a sword, these would have pistols and a sword and shield, but would still be heavily armored enough to be able to do some type of damage up front, whilst also kiting enemies? 
it would be very unique at least, so I could see the justification of that here. A completely new unit which could be added in would be long rifles, because, well, you know, we have scavenger sales, we have the cafeinger sales. While I'm not too keen with every unit having the same role, the Hotchin long rifles are a staple of Warhammer Fantasy, especially for the Empire, so it would be interesting to add in a sniper unit, further adding into more types of gunpowder based weaponry, especially for a null DLC once again. These would be extremely long range, they would work the same way maybe just without the shield so they wouldn't have the armor making them a lot more squishier but it definitely fits with the theme and i think that that's the most important thing lastly another bit of artwork which could be a potential unit which are griffin riders with range weapons think of them as flying monstrous cavalry it could be quite interesting it's just something that could add more to the gunpowder feel. This is so heavily gunpowder based because of the city itself that it could be cool. They could also ride in, do some damage. Griffin Cavalry would be a great support unit and it could pair quite nicely with Demigriffs, so I don't see it as something completely out of the question. It's just something that they, you know, the problem with Games Workshop is they provide a lot of artwork and provide a lot of possibilities, but never really give us the units. So at this case, we've seen it happen before with artwork being turned into a unit. I see it as a very possible thing. Now, you might think that the Empire section is a bit bare, but I think that they'll get the most benefit from FLC. Coming in with a quick edit here, because I did forget a possible hero choice for the Empire, which is the Engineer. This would allow for a character to be focused around all your artillery, to be able to buff all your range units or your artillery units. You'd have a really cool mount too with the mechanical engineer. I'm honestly really shocked that I forgot that this existed. It would be a support hero which would work really really well for the Empire, especially since the Empire is so varied and you have so many different options. This would be kind of cool. Plus, mechanical horse, I mean, what's not to love? It would have different weapon options too, which would be nice if we finally had weapon options when it came to skill points. So you could change from, say, a standard pistol to a long rifle or anything, really, it just depends. So, like I said, obvious bias there, but this is the issue that happens with the whole Lord Pack thing. But, FLC is very common, especially for DLC. Sometimes it's one thing, sometimes it's a few units, sometimes it's a hero too, and I feel like this could be done very well. On the side of Chaos, two basic things. First up, generic Chaos Ogres, which will fall under FLC. Now, these could be given to every single Chaos faction and just have the basic recolor. I'm not the keenest person when it comes to recolors at this point, but they're just basic Chaos Ogres. These are like the Plague Ogres, which were very unique and had their own stuff, so this would allow some monstrous units to all four, well, five, six, how many Chaos factions there are at the moment, because obviously they would go to the Monogods too, I think. And then finally, the generic Chaos Lord and Chaos Sorcerer Lord with Nurgle stuff. So, you know, the lore of Nurgle for the Sorcerer Lord and some Nurgle-themed skills for the generic Fighting Lord. I think that would work out quite well, as that means that you can actually have a Nurgle type of character leading your Nurgle-focused armies. Really, they should just be included in the patch, just add it to the roster and that's it, because we already have access to the Lord of Nurgle and all that, but they would probably make it FLC like they have done with other generic lords and heroes. Oh yeah, and this would also be given the Lore of Nurgle to the generic Kale Sorcerer hero, because... Yeah. Whereas for the Empire, they could do one big mega FLC, which is just finally giving us the remaining generic hero choices for all the different wizards types, and also making them lord choices too. They tend to do this one by one, but it's incredibly frustrating as we've only had the hero choices, and we need spellcaster lords. Let's be honest, we need spellcaster lords for the Empire. So while the DLC faction might have not been the best because it's just adding in some units and so on, then it just adds in stuff here for the FLC, which I figure something like this would make the player base very happy, especially since the Empire is one of the most popular factions. Just give them everything that they need from there, and you're pretty much sorted. When it comes to legendary characters as FLC, I don't know what they could do here. There's Theodore Bruckner, but I imagine him being a legendary hero for the Empire side, which would probably add, then add in either Sail the Faithless or Kazik the Befouled as a legendary hero for Tamilcon. The thing is, I'm not talking about legendary heroes a lot because, well, the last DLC didn't have any, so I'm not sure what they're doing, especially since they were so popular. But for a legendary lord, I'd say Sail the Faithless would be cool to add in a Zinchian character. That means that we get some variety. It doesn't have to follow around the same factions that are being implemented, so a Zinchian character would be cool, but I don't imagine that they would do like the Border Prince, for example, because I do imagine that we will get a Border Prince character in the future when it comes to a Dogs of War DLC. The problem with this is... 
We don't know where it's going. We're going to have to wait to see how DLC is tackled with Warhammer 3 in case anything is radically changing. But as it stands, I mean, this sounds like a pretty boss DLC. It would add in a lot of features for Nurgle, which are desperately needed. It would add a lot of gunpowder for the Empire, which adds more to the whole faith steal and gunpowder thing. And they're just generally cool characters. I think that's the most important thing. I must admit, yes, I did miss out on possible Forge World units for the Empire, but the Marienburg landship, I think, is going to go directly to Marienburg, unless they're able to recruit it. Now, a lot of people might suggest the Carmine Dragon, but I feel like the Carmine Dragon needs to stay unique. The only thing that I could really suggest is finally allowing us to have Imperial Dragons, because that would be just kind of awesome. Like, they're supposed to be massive and so on. They were never really too well represented in Tabletop, but it would be cool, and maybe that could act as an FLC addition or a patch addition to, say, Carl Franz, allowing him to mount on an Imperial Dragon, because we know he does that in lore. I don't know. This is the weird thing when it comes to these speculations, especially when the Empire is really complete. But I think some new units being added in and all this being done like that works out quite well. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below and let's start a bit of a discussion. I wanted to just like talk about the future a little bit. I like staying away from talking about possible DLC when the game's not really in a good place at the moment. But this is something that's just been in my mind a lot, especially every time I see the Null City. It's just, it's so impressive. It is so impressive. But with that, my friends, we've come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like or even subscribing to the channel as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various links to different social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram and Discord. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games where you could buy loads of hobby based products, not just Warhammer, for 10 to 25% off. Making a purchase using that link and also our special code which is also in the description supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to our higher level of content. A big thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Prince and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Yule, VS Fasan, Aaron Whitman and Shaggy for subscribing to us at our king level, honestly we can't thank you all enough. And lastly, a big thank you to all of you for liking, sharing and commenting on these videos. Honestly, it's because of you guys that the channel has been growing at such a great pace lately, so we can't thank you all enough. But with that my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and we shall see you all again very very soon. Have a good day.